Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Wolfarth, and welcome to Tools of War, Nationalism in the 19th Century. Here we'll be discussing how the United States Civil War relates to the nationalistic unification wars of Germany and Italy during the same time period. Now before we start, I think it's really important that we kind of define our terms so we're all on the same page. According to Merriam-Webster, nationalism is defined as loyalty and devotion to a nation, especially a sense of national consciousness. I think it's also important that we define the key components of each of the causes. So in the United States, Abraham Lincoln was the head figure for nationalism for the Union side. Otto von Bismarck for Prussia slash Germany, and Giuseppe Garibaldi and Victor Emmanuel II for Italy. To recap, nationalism forms a stronger nation by unifying the people within that nation. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. Now let's start the comparisons. And to start, we're going to dive into the, what differentiates the Civil War from the other two wars. The main differences between the Civil War and the wars of unification in Germany and Italy don't really lie in the thematics, the broad picture stuff, but more in the practicality of it all. This is evident in the causes of each of the wars. The Civil War was caused over the debate on slavery and the South feeling that their way of life and political power was being threatened, which caused their succession. However, in Germany, the main cause was the revolutions of 1848, which showed the need for a strong, unified Germany. And in Italy, the main cause was the creation of independent governments by the Congress of Vienna after the Napoleonic Wars, which led to Italy largely being controlled by the Austrian Empire. In addition to cause, the way the Civil War was fought also differentiated from the wars in Germany and Italy. While America's unification was fought for in one big war from 1861 to 1865 when Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse, Germany and Italy actually achieved their unification through a series of wars. For Germany, there was the Second Schleswig War, which established the northern part of the German Empire, the Austro-Prussia War, in which Prussia's victory ended German dualism and granted connection between Prussia's core of Brandenburg and then economically important Rhine provinces, and the Franco-Prussian War, which eliminated France as the biggest power in Central Europe and fully solidified the German Empire. In Italy, there was the Italian revolutions of 1820 and 1830, the revolutions of 1848 in the Italian states, the First and Second Italian Wars of Independence, the Expedition of the Thousand, where Garibaldi captured Sicily, and the Third War of Italian Independence. The reason why Germany and Italy required multiple wars to unify was because they faced multiple opponents in their quest to unite. It was not like in America, where it was just the Union versus the rebels. Finally, the third area of difference was the motive behind these wars. Prussia, through the use of real politique, wanted to create a strong Germany free of French influence, and Italy wanted to create a unified republic free of Austrian rule. At the root of it all, both countries wanted to unite the people of their region and create an independent nation. See, while the Civil War was in a sense a unification war, it was really a reunification war, as America had already been a country before the South's succession, and the North was fighting to bring the South back. We'll win the war soon. It's inevitable, isn't it? Well, it ain't won yet. While the differences of the wars lay in the practicalities, the similarities reside in the thematics. All three wars were born from a sense of rivalry. In America, there was North and the South, Germany was Prussia versus Austria, and Italy had the Piedmont, the Austrian-controlled states, the Parma-Modena-Tusk region, the Papal states, and the Kingdom of Naples. Each group held different ideals by which to lead the nation. For the sides that would end up victorious, each one had an iconic, nationalistically-fueled speech that became a sort of rally cry. There was Bismarck's Iron and Blood speech for Prussia, Garibaldi's Conquest of Naples speech in 1860 for the Red Shirts, and, of course, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address for the Union. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. 
In all instances, there were seeds of nationalism being planted in the decades leading up to the wars. This is seen in the liberal arts of the time. For example, Alessandro Manzoni's The Betrothed in 1827, Johann Gottlieb Fitt's Address to the German Nation in 1808, and Francis Scott Key's Defense of Fort McHenry in 1814, which eventually became the national anthem for America. And of course, the biggest similarity was the overarching theme of nationalism. All three countries had the same goal, to create a nation in which the people of that nation were united by strong tides of pride they had for that country. And for the most part, this plan worked. In the decades to follow, Germany and Italy both became military powers. And in America, we stopped referring to ourselves by the state in which we came from, but as simply one people. Simply Americans. Thanks for watching.